Welcome to Flourish, the podcast. My name is Frank Bernard, and I'll be your host for this episode. Wherever you're listening from, we welcome you. Arthritis is a painful disease, and millions of Canadians suffer in silence from it. That's why we're here to talk about the quiet and often misunderstood challenges that are associated with it. We hope this will help you flourish with arthritis. Our guests today are Trish Barbato, President and CEO of the Arthritis Society, and her mother, Maria. Trish has been at the helm of the Arthritis Society since February 2020, and she brings more than 20 years of experience as a senior executive in the fields of health and senior living. She is a published author and an international speaker on topics such as design thinking, innovation, and leadership. Trish is also a certified fitness instructor, a meditation instructor, and holds a black belt in Kung Fu kickboxing. Trish, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be here. And by her side today is Maria, mother of six, grandmother of 11, who emigrated from Italy with the family when Trish was only five years old. Maria has been living with osteoarthritis for over 20 years, feeling the effects of the disease in her shoulders, back, and knee. She's been a major influence in her daughter's life and in her choice to pursue a career in the health charity sector. Senora Barbato, welcome to Flourish, the podcast. Grazie. My first question is, is quite the open one, but I think a very important one. How has arthritis impacted your family? It's very bad because you you know, feel like yourself, right? You got a pain in the arm, you got a pain in the legs, you got a pain everywhere, right? So I just like say, okay, who cares? Just keep moving. My family is really familiar with arthritis. I have an uncle with gout. I have an aunt whose arthritis in her hip is so bad she can't walk and she's not eligible for surgery. My, three of my siblings have arthritis. I have a family member with rheumatoid arthritis. I have arthritis in my hands and my knee. Yeah. So it's a it's a disease that is pervasive in my entire family and has an impact on everyone. So this disease is very close to my heart. Perhaps, Maria, you can tell us a little bit about you, what your life with arthritis has been for the past 20 years. It's... Uh... It look like you got a, somebody on shore all the time, you know. But what are you going to do? So you just keep going. If you stop like you're dead, <laughs> you can't move no more. So so as soon as I sit down, as soon as I, I was too tired, so I sit down for a few minutes and then get up and move. I still go for a walk and uh, still try to do everything, but it's hard. Yeah, I think what's... Um so fascinating as family members observing the progression of this disease on someone who is as vibrant, as powerful, um, as independent as my mother is it's like, it takes something away every day, every day. Yeah. And you watch that. So it's, yeah, it's really difficult. Yeah. My mom, was a chef in an Italian restaurant and she worked really hard. Um, but I think once, you know, the, you can't work, there's a point in which you cannot do that kind of work. You're standing on your feet all day. You're, you're trying to carry things you get. It's impossible. So it's impossible yeah. to work. And then, uh, so that goes, and then, you know, you can't lift things. You can't move yeah. things. You can't do this. You can't do that. And it just keeps going on and on. Mm -hmm. So it kind of like steals a bit of you yeah. every, every day, every day. Mm -hmm. Every day. And so what does a bad day looks like for you? When it's, um, the weather change, like today it's humid, so all your body is in pain. When it's a sunny day, look like you you alive again. So weather has a big impact, you have noticed. Very, very, yeah. And on a good day where the sun is shining, what can you do? I do, I do the more, right? I do more uh, stuff. I do more uh, cooking. I'm more like in the house. Like uh, I take care of the baby. Like, you know, I can do stuff for water. But when uh, you don't feel good, like it's hard. You have been living with arthritis for 20 years now. There has been a lot of treatments, a lot of medication involved, I am sure. 
Have you seen improvements in the care and medication? Uh, maybe. If I don't take it, it's worse, but I don't see too much. Uh, they do those. Uh, but I don't like take the stronger stuff. My yeah. mom was on some pain medication that was so strong. And this is kind of funny, but I was with her one day and we were going to go into the hot tub. And I, I honestly thought she was high. I, I, I didn't know what was wrong with her. She was saying crazy things. I go, what is wrong with you? But she had taken this pain medication yeah. and it was, it was just too, she had, the, the dose that they started on was overpowering too much. Yeah. And I was actually afraid she was going to fall. I, I was afraid she was, you know, going to kind of lose her more mobility. Um, and really with osteoarthritis, we haven't seen a lot of progression to be honest with you, in yeah. terms of treatment, it's, it's not, it ha really has not advanced that much for a person with osteoarthritis. I mean, great in terms of some of the joint replacement, when you get to that point, I think that's been, you know, that that's really great, but kind of on a day-to-day -day basis, the, the treatments have not made significant advancements. Outside of the medication, is there anything that helps? Mm -hmm. And you like heat, yeah. like you like, um, yeah. you know, if she can get in a hot tub or a sauna or yeah. um, and al alternate yeah. sometimes with cold. So just the regular things that you would do to try and have a bit of, of pain relief. Is there any advice you would like to give uh, Senora Barbato to the people who have arthritis? If you could speak to everyone who has arthritis today, is there an advice you would have for them? The advice I gave it, do never stop. Get up and keep moving. It doesn't matter what you do, you know? Soon you got to get up from a chair, as you know, you're, you, you stop. Like I got the last year in my arm, I can't move it. Like I cannot move it. So I went at the drugstore to buy those things that are old, and I keep moving. I never stop. But the pain was like terrible. Trish, you mentioned earlier the challenges associated with being the family member of someone living with arthritis. What's it like being a caregiver? It's hard to watch. It's definitely hard to watch yeah. that that incremental reduction of uh, ability and mobility. And try as family members, obviously, we want to be helpful, but we don't want to take away your independence. As you can see, my mother is uh, very independently minded and likes to mm -hmm. do her own thing. But at the same time, I, I would say we all worry. We, we worry about her falling. We worry about her doing too much and, and making it worse. We worry, we worry about all kinds of things. And we try and make things as easy as possible to try and be there for her. We make, I have one sister who makes all kinds of appointments for her to try and support her, whether it's chiropractor, massage, different things that might be helpful for her. And so I think that's what you do is you're there yeah. uh, to support, but it's, it's hard with arthritis. People really do just consider it to be normal. And I say, what, what is normal about it? You're in pain all day. You lose your ability. There's nothing normal about that. It's not normal. It's not just arthritis. We have to do something about this. And so I think for me, especially because it affects so many people that I'm very close to, I am highly motivated to make sure that we do something for people living with arthritis. What have you learned about arthritis from having it personally affect your family? Well, I think there's a, there's a few things. One is that the health system is not on the osteo side, is not well set up. There isn't a specialization for osteoarthritis. No one owns that. And when you go to a family physician and uh, this is the best they can, they can do is say, well, you know, you'll be a great uh, candidate for a knee replacement, which is what I was told. That's it. And you're off on your way, come back when you need a joint replacement. There's just really not that much they can do. And so having that experience firsthand, you realize, wow, people really have to educate themselves. They have to try and find solutions that work for them. They have to really seek out the things that make it better for them. We're much better on the inflammatory side. There is specialization with rheumatologists in that area, but even there, 
it can take people years to be properly diagnosed. A family member in our family is just being do- diagnosed now. She's had symptoms for years. I've heard from patients it's taken seven years to be diagnosed, 10 years to be diagnosed. Again, there's nothing, there's no just in that. It's serious. Arthritis is serious. And, and that's what I want. I want people to know that. And leading this organization, I want us as an organization to do something about that. I think you have a, a very... Uh impressive example right beside you today of what standing up to arthritis can look like, what not letting arthritis stop you, what it looks like. Uh, How does Maria fight the fire of arthritis? And my mom, you know, bless her heart. She's tough. She goes through a lot of pain every day, but she will try and exercise. She will try and move. She will try and do all the things that she eats right. She keeps her weight down. But even, even doing all that, that doesn't, it helps so marginally. Like, yes, you need to do that. Those are almost table stakes. Yeah. But my mom is sort of, you can't see this obviously on a podcast, but (laughs) she's sort of completely hunched over. Yeah. Yeah. So I think even, even physically, she wants to be upright. Yeah. You want to look people in the eye. These are very simple things. Yeah. But, you know, she can't. And in fact, well, what are you, one of the doctors told you? To stay down, a walk with the walk. I said, no, I don't walk with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> but they said if it alleviates the pain, just find a position yeah. you, hunched over. Like that's hunched more... over and, and she said, it's okay, don't, don't worry about it. I said, okay, if you say so. Yeah, that's a no answer. There's a no answer. You know, it is no answer. That is no answer. I say, I I just want to know what I can do, what you can do. Nothing. You just, you just, you got to move. That's all. Everybody and dealers, they find something. Everybody got to move. Soon you sit down, you're done. Yes. And, and, and I think that's one of the, the catchy phrases our physical uh, readaptation team uses is motion is lotion. Uh, I think it's a very important sentence to keep in mind, uh, no matter what age or condition, I think it's it's what's been recommended. There's only so much you can do, but that part you can do. Uh, and it's great that you have that that mindset, uh, Senora Barbato, to, to keep pushing and, and stay active and find ways to take care and ownership of, of what you can take care and ownership of. Um, it, it's quite inspiring. Uh, I, I do find it inspiring hearing about people like yourself, Maria, who uh, have these very, very difficult condition and yet always find motivation and ways to keep working and, and keep going. Um, how does your mother inspire you in your work, Trish? Well, she's like a beacon. She is the raison d'etre. Uh, I keep her and all my family members with arthritis in a meeting, if I'm working on something, I think about them. So yeah, it gives a lot of purpose and meaning to my work and it really motivates me. I have to say, yeah, I want to, I want to do something like in my lifetime. I want, I want the arthritis society to make a difference. We'll take a short break right here and we'll be right back with Trish Barbato and her mother, Maria Barbato. Grazie. If you'd like to receive health and wellness advice, self-management tips, inspirational stories, and much more to help you move through life with arthritis, sign up to the Flourish e-newsletter. To do so, visit arthritis.ca slash flourish. We are back with Trish and Maria Barbato. Maria, can you tell us a bit about Trish? What kind of daughter is she? She was great from the day she was born. She was uh, bossy from the day she born. Control everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to laugh. <laughs> she was um, very smart. Like she go, um, we got a smaller place to to get a la- library. And that lady called me. I got to go there. And I say, oh, my God, what she did now. So I went there and she said, we got no more book for her. <laughs> uh, she said, like, maybe 
keep a week at home and then she come next week. I said, okay. Because I thought, I don't know what she did. I was <laughs> worried. <laughs> and now, how does she help you manage your arthritis as your daughter? Well, she she bring me to the doctor if I need to. Like she tell me I don't want to get to work that much. And, you know, we just stuff like that. When she told you that she got the position as the president and CEO of the Arthritis Society, what was your reaction? I said, good. Finally, somebody go there and do something. <laughs> <laughs> you have, uh, I, I hear you have a lot of confidence in her ability to achieve what she sets out to do and help yes. people with arthritis. Why do you think she'll be successful? in that position? Because she do right things. She not just have stuff for money. She just uh, goes to do work first, you know? You need the money too, but you gotta, you gotta make a dose. You gotta do something. And she, and she does good. So she was three years old before we came in Canada. I sent to the school, to the nun, So I went to pick her up one day and uh, she said, Signora, you don't have to worry about your daughter because she be, I don't know, president or something because she too smart. She, she take care of the, the school already, three years old. A natural born leader. And that's why I never scared for her. <laughs> I'm sure, as you mentioned, you see that she's taking this position with the right intentions. Yes. Uh, in our heart, she's doing it for the right reasons. Yes. What makes you proud to be Trish's mother? Oh, for everything. I can't complain with uh, with anything, right? So I'm happy with, not just her, with all my children. I got a six, they're all good. <laughs> High praise from your mother, Trish. You mentioned, obviously, that having your mom Uh, living with arthritis is, is is what you bring to work every day with you. It's part of the reason why you're you're here. Can you tell us a bit more about why did you choose to work for the Arthritis Society? The opportunity was really to work with an organization and a disease that I felt was underrepresented. Underrepresented from a research perspective, underrepresented from a fundraising perspective, just underrepresented from an awareness perspective generally. And as you heard from my mother, I am, I like to take charge and I really like an underdog. I like to really look at something that has much, much, much greater potential. I would say that's true of both organizations and people and draw out the greatest strengths, draw out the greatest potential that can be achieved. That is what I saw in this opportunity with being the president and CEO of the Arthritis Society. And that's really one of the main reasons. And the fact that it impacts myself personally and so many of my direct family members, not to mention the other 6 million people living in Canada with arthritis, it's a huge cause. So it was in many ways an easy decision to make. Why is Arthritis Society so important? I think about all of the impacts that arthritis has. It is the number one reason for disability for employers, for example, in employment. That has an economic impact, a productivity impact in a country where six million people have arthritis. I think about the impact of kids living with arthritis. We have thousands of children that are living with juvenile arthritis and the impact that that has on that, on that child, on their family. And I think about people who are trying to live their life, providing for their family, just normal things, all impacted by arthritis, all negatively impacted by arthritis. And when you have a chronic disease, you also have the mental component of that, kind of the day-to-day -day weight of wondering if this is going to be a good day. Am I going to be able to accomplish what I need? Do I have enough energy to do what I need to do? And when I look at all of that, 
and the sheer numbers of people who have arthritis, that's, that's why this is important to me. The cause is important. The people suffering from arthritis are important to me. And I think we, I think we have a huge opportunity to make a real difference. A real difference you mentioned, and and I couldn't agree more. I think uh, you were absolutely right. It's it's such a major disease. It affects so many of us. For the people it supports, what is the Arthritis Society's impact? What kind of impact can it have for these 6 million Canadians? Well, we need to fund more research. We need to get more dollars in the hands of the brilliant scientists and physician researchers that are out there who are opening up the opportunity for better treatment for arthritis. And ultimately, these researchers are going to find a cure. So we need, we need to support it. We are the only ones that can support it at the magnitude that it needs to be supported. So that is a, as a huge part of the impact that we will make. We also need to advocate and change the conversation around arthritis. We need to make sure that the voices of people with arthritis are heard, that this is true with policymakers, with government, with employers, that we really stand up and say this matters and we need to pay attention to this disease. So that's really an important part of our role. We also want to make sure that people are, are armed with good information, good resources, good evidence-based education and tools so that they can self-manage and, and they can advocate for themselves. They know what question to ask. And then, and the other area that is really exciting to me that we will just be launching will be around innovation and working with the entrepreneurial ecosystem looking at the opportunity to create social impact investments and to really, I think, change the conversation around what the Arthritis Society is, is doing and how we're doing it. And so we really look forward to that as well. You have been at the helm of the Arthritis Society since February 2020, uh, about over a year now. Uh, what's your proudest moment since your start? You know, I wish I had something really illuminating to say, but I'm going to say that the best thing that happened is that I got through COVID with the organization. I had only started, uh, really, I was only in the office for about three weeks before the pandemic hit. And as you can imagine, with many charities, it had an impact on revenue and so many things. And so that was hard work in terms of looking at the organization, cost-cutting, we had to restructure several times. It was just very heavy work, if I could describe it that way. And I feel that having that behind us now, we are in such a better position and in a strong position to do all the wonderful things that we need to be doing in terms of fundraising, in order to fund more research, around launching innovation, and all those things that are positive and really impact people living with arthritis. So I think I, probably what I would say is I, I am proud that we got through the worst of the pandemic in a way that allowed us to be positioned for a very bright future. Trish Barbato, President and CEO of the Arthritis Society, and her mother, Maria Barbato, thank you so much for being on the podcast with us today. I am wishing you both a fantastic Mother's Day. Perhaps a parting thought. Do you have a message for all the daughters and mothers out there living with arthritis? Well, to have a faith, the second, then the this goes through very good. And you find the something. To have faith in the future. The faith in, yeah, in the future. That the it will future. be brighter, that yes. things will be brighter with this disease. Yes. yes. Okay, I second that motion. Yeah. Let's have a brighter future with arthritis. That's it. Thank you for listening to Flourish the Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to this series to get notifications when new episodes are available. If you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, please reach out to us at info at arthritis.ca. The opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the guests. They do not reflect the opinions or views of the Arthritis Society.